Today we're going to be doing an unboxing, test and review of kind of a unique and different tool here for Java's Garage. And that is we're going to test out the new Ryobi Devour Power Debris Sweeper that's being offered through Home Depot. Now none of my local stores actually carried this in stock so I had to order it online and have it shipped to me. So that's why it's in this box here and we'll actually take it all out of here today. We're going to go through it. We're going to see what comes in the packaging, what it takes to put it all together. And then we're going to do some real world testing with it here in the garage, outside in the driveway, out in the street. We're going to try all sorts of different things. Actually, when I showed a picture of it to my wife, she came up with the really cool idea of, I wonder if it would pick up Legos and Hot Wheels that the kids leave laying around all the time. So you know what? I think we're even going to test it for that and see how well it does. Now, I got to be honest with you, I'm not a real Ryobi fan. Um, I own some Ryobi tools quite some time ago and they didn't really do well for me. And since then, and pretty much all the tools I purchased have either been rigid as you see here or the Milwaukee stuff that I've really been happy with. Those of you who watch my videos will recognize this tool. I use this all the time. This is the Milwaukee 3 8 inch power ratchet. And this is probably my favorite most used tool in my toolbox. However, about three years ago, I did pick up this Ryobi hot glue gun that I use for doing paintless dent repair. And actually it's held up really well. I've used it quite a bit and it's always worked. I've never had an issue with it. We've even done some school projects for the kids and some things here around the house and it's held up and done really well. So when I saw this and how unique it was and how it may be able to help me, I thought, you know what? I gotta get one of these, show it all to you folks as well as test it out here and let's see how well it does and let's see if it's worth the investment. So now that we have everything out of the packaging, I thought I would lay it all out here and go through it and just show you what's included in the box so you have an idea before we actually unwrap them and start playing with everything. So here we have the charger that's included with it. You have, naturally, it comes with a battery, so you're able to power up the system. It does have owner's manuals. You have one that's for the main body of the unit. You have another one here that's for your battery, as well as you have another one that's for the charger, and then a supplemental one just in case the other three didn't cover it. We also have the main body of the unit and then over here we have our side poles that will come up here off the side that will actually go ahead and connect up into your main handle. So this is everything that's included. Let's start unpackaging it so we can take a closer look at this new sweeper. Now here in the middle it has the storage unit that basically as it cleans things up and throws it down the middle, it's stored here in this center compartment. And basically to remove it, what you'll do is just grab it here by the handle, take your thumb, pull the button back, and it lifts up like that. Now it is does look dark here and it may here in the video, but it is kind of a smoked clear if you will, so you can see through it so that you would be able to see hopefully if your storage bins getting filled up on there it's a nice heavy duty plastic um, it does have this area here in it so basically you can walk over to your trash can and dump everything out there i'm not sure it's got a lip that's right in here i'm not sure how that's going to work out in the long run when you go to dump things if things aren't going to get kind of trapped in here um, but we'll see how that goes as we test it out other than that it's really well made and it's a decent size should be able to hold a fair amount of stuff as we start up here on the front, naturally we have our bristles up here. And right here you have two little posts and these here are called bristle deflectors. And what they're for is when you're going up against the close side of a wall, if you press these down, what it does is it actually holds the bristles in place so they clean right up against the edge of the wall. And both sides have one that you just push down like that. And then when you'd be done doing that, all you'd have to do is just lift them up like so and get back to your normal sweeping. They do have these wheels that are here on the outside edges. So as you're going up against walls and whatnot, it's not gonna scrape or scratch as it goes along. It's got these little wheels that ride along there. It does have two headlamps up here on the front. So if you're working in a lower lighted area, it will light up the work surface for you as you move along. Here on the side we have these knobs and this here is where our handles are going to connect up to and it just kind of rests on here. If we go around to the back side here, it does have four legs or posts here if you will so that when you want to actually store it in your garage or your shed or whatnot, it'll stand up on those four legs. 
Also back here we have our on off button that you can hit with your foot or reach down hit it by hand. And then over here naturally is where we're going to place the battery to be able to operate the unit. This right here is an adjustment for the height and basically what it will do is it will raise and lower the back end of the unit. And so if you're working on a smooth surface you want the back end to be higher up. And then if you're working on a more rough surface you want the back end to be lower. So basically it puts more pressure or less pressure on your bristles or your sweepers there on the front. And basically as you turn this, as you'll see, like right now we're moving it towards the rough surface area, it raises up the back end. And then when we go back to our smooth surface mode, it basically will lower it back down again. So let me switch it here around to the front and I'll show you basically how that works. So here we're in a smooth surface mode. So it has it tilted down. So it's almost pushing the brushes down, if you will, onto your cleaning surface. And then if we go back and we turn it the other way, then it will go back to a rough surface mode where it's still touching the surface, but it just doesn't have that same amount of pressure. So it's adjustable just as you see here. So now what let's do is let's put a battery in and we'll turn it on and that way you can just get an idea and kind of see how it works. Actually, before I do that, let's do this. Let's stand it up so you can get a look at the bottom side. Here we have our bristles and our brushes that actually spin towards the center and it picks things up, throws it down the middle and puts it down here into your storage unit. Where each of your bristles are, you have a three inch swivel caster that's on here. So that way it gives you full range of motion to be able to use it. They're a hard plastic. Down here on the bottom where your height adjuster is, you have another caster on here. These are like a inch and a half inch wheel that's on there and there's two of them there so those move and basically what that does is that then gives you the ability with all those casters you can go side to side you can whatever range of motion you would need to do to make the system work you can certainly do that so now what we'll do is we'll go ahead and we're going to just put our battery in its slot right there just like that and then if we come back here i'm going to go ahead and turn this on i'll show you here so you just reach down hit this button and just like that, your sweeper is on. So you can see how these bristles take everything and scoop it up to the front. We have our LEDs. Let me lift it up so you can get a better view of how it's operating underneath. Just like so. So basically what it will do is it will take things and it will scoop them up. I grabbed a couple of clips here just so you can get an idea. So as it's cleaning, it will basically grab those and throw those into the back. Just like that. Hopefully you can see that going through there. We'll try it with the container in, but I thought maybe this way here it would give you an idea. Oh, and our battery's dead. I haven't had a chance to plug it in. I just thought I'd see where it would come from the factory. So this is another good example. When you're running low on battery, when it quits, your lights are going to flash and your sweeper is going to shut down. So before we start our next steps and our next set of tests and, and putting everything together here, let me get our charger plugged in. Let's get the battery going. So when we do start testing it, we're going to be trying it with a full battery. So I got to say I'm a bit disappointed here. If you notice during that last section of video I was doing there, when I was working with the height adjustment, it was giving me some hassle and it wasn't working. And so I tried moving it back and forth and it finally started moving. Now the problem we have with it is you can adjust it to a certain level, but as you can see, if you put any kind of pressure, it's not doing a positive lock as it was supposed to. Now it's sticking here. The bottom line is, it's just not working and so right out of the box before there and you'll see now it just did like a hard click but it's just it's not working like it should be now it's sticking in the middle and um you know what can i say i hate to see that right out of the box it won't hold its position and it's not working right so before we move on with our tests and probably return this i'm going to take this center piece out or our storage and down in the base here, we have a set of screws in here. And I'm going to take these out. We're going to pull this back panel off. And uh, let's see what we can see what's going on with this. Hopefully it's just something simple. Maybe came loose or something. So now that we've done that, let's just pull this off the back. And see if we can see what's going on here. You'll get a good view. And that figures because our whole wheel mechanism is up inside of here in its own separate container. So I'm going to disconnect our wiring here. 
set this off to the side see if we can see how this works looks like we have two screws down in here that hold that panel and there's really only two screws that hold this wheel assembly in position so we're going to take those out and so now we can set this off to the side so let's take these two screws out and see what's going on with our assembly here Now we have it taken apart. Not exactly sure why this has come apart. You can see here's the cylinder and it has basically like a rifling, if you will, down inside of there, which is what it moves up and down on. And then there are some teeth that are located up here along the top. I'm gonna assume these here are the positive stops, which is where it stops as you're adjusting it and uh, it's screwed in to the top handle there so what i'm going to do is get a long uh, screwdriver and we'll get inside of there take this apart we're going to see if we can't figure out what went wrong here and uh, try and move forward with our testing there we go and i see right there's our issue already we had a piece come out so basically already the knob is broken on this Ryobi machine. Let's see if we can't take this out. And we still even have, it looks like we have a piece that's in here too, right there. So basically the knob broke right off the bat. Now maybe it's possible that happened in shipping or something. Um, I couldn't say for sure, but uh, unfortunately, This is going to have to go back because it's broken entirely. I'm going to go ahead and pause this here for a few minutes with y'all. Let me uh, try and get these broken pieces to at least go back together in there. And uh, then we'll check back in and we'll see if we can't manage to get some testing done before I return it and uh, get another one. I thought maybe you would like to maybe get a up close shot of what's back in here this here is your on off button and so basically it just has this little paddle that comes in and it hits a switch here that's on your circuit board this here is for your battery and that just runs your power over like so so we're going to go ahead and this slides back down in here and we're going to go ahead and put these screws back in and reassemble the unit so many things have changed and a lot of time has passed. Actually, it's been a few months since I shot that last clip there and we've been in a lockdown here. And uh, so it's actually given me time to actually play with this sweeper and try it out. And the kids have used it and we've tried it under all sorts of different scenarios. And I'm gonna share those clips with, with you here shortly. Um, but after that last clip, I was really disappointed that this thing kind of broke there right out of the box before trying it. And I really was going to just end the video there and basically not recommend it. And the more I thought about it, I really wanted to give it a fair shot because, you know, they're man-made pieces of equipment. And I don't care what brand you buy or how much you pay for it. You know, odds are every now and then you're just going to get one that had an issue out of the factory. And that doesn't mean that they're all bad. And so I wanted to give this thing a fair shake. So I ended up calling Ryobi's customer service number. And I'll tell you what, I dealt with a really nice lady there and they actually sent me out a replacement part that is for the entire assembly here on the back that has the adjustment knob. They sent me out the re entire replacement part. And I gotta say, they were fantastic. The lady was super nice. She took my information. I didn't have to give them a bunch of information. I mean, it was very quick, very easy. They sent this to me free of charge. They shipped it, everything. It took about a week and a half, two weeks to get here. And so I have this part so I can now go ahead and replace that. And you know what? I really appreciate that from Ryobi. Uh, you have to give them credit for that. So I'm gonna go ahead 
ahead and put our new part in here. I'm not gonna have you watch that. You've already seen me do that in the previous clip, take it all apart. So you don't need to see that again. So I'm gonna go ahead, get that part changed out. We're gonna continue testing this out. As you can see from how dirty this thing is, uh, we've actually been putting it through some paces and I'm gonna share those clips with you here shortly. And uh, once we're done with all that, let's sit down, go over this, some of the things we like, some of the things we don't like about it. And let's see if this is something that would be good for you.
So, what's our final thoughts when it comes to the Ryobi Devour Power Sweeper? Well, I gotta say I really like the storage, onboard storage of the debris it picks up in here. That makes it nice as opposed to using, say, like a blower sometimes where you don't want to blow things out into the street or whatnot. This will actually pick it up, store it in here, make it easy for me to dump it into my trash can. I like the lights on the front end because there were a few times we were using it in the evening when we got done doing the yard. And so it was nice just to have that feature as we were doing and out in the front sidewalk there. The battery lasts about 30, 35 minutes, so it gives you plenty of time to be able to do most of your driveways and sidewalks there, unless you got a really long driveway. And so that worked out really well for that. It does store nicely and the fact that this arm here will go up and around and then you store it standing up. So it takes up a small amount of floor space in the garage and that's really nice to have because realistically, as you can see here, it's about the size of a lawnmower. So it's nice to be able to stand it up and move it up against the wall and it has a small footprint to save space in your garage. Now, I gotta say, we got done replacing our height adjustment wheel here on the back. We did about three more tests with it. We were trying it on some different surfaces. And I hate to say that as we were adjusting it one more time to do the different surfaces, the knob broke in the same spot once again. So without a doubt, Ryobi has a problem in that knob. It just has a really thin, quite frankly, cheap piece of plastic in there. And when it gets a little bit bound and you try and move it a bit, it just breaks. And so that is a major design flaw with this. If you're gonna get one of these, be prepared for the fact that it's gonna be stuck in the down position and that knob will break at some point. I've had two of these and they've broken really quickly on it. And so apparently we have a design flaw in there and I haven't forced those. I've really tried to baby them so I could get it to work. So they do have a problem with that. Some of the other things that we discovered with it was when you store it and you put the handle in the up position to stand it upright, what happens is the handle comes around and it pushes these little side clips down in that you use for going against the wall. So then when you go to use it again and you set it back down, you got to reach down and you got to grab these and you got to pull them back out again and sometimes they don't like to move. So you do have to do this every time once you stand it up, it's going to push these side clips back down and you got to do that. Uh, some of the other things we noticed using it was it has a real big tendency to leave a stripe down the middle, especially when you're doing dirt, sand, sawdust, things of that nature, or a heavier amount of grass. It's going to leave a stripe down the middle. It's just, it's going to do it. Be ready for that. And so what happens is you find yourself having to make several trips back and forth. Otherwise, you're going to have that stripe in there. It does pick up, I would say, about 70 to 75 percent of particles or things that are on your floor there that you're doing. What happens with the other 25 percent is you either have a stripe down the middle or it throws it out either back here or out the front and it throws it back where you've already worked. So what we found is we had to go back over things five or six times to be able to actually get everything picked up on it. And so quite frankly, in terms of using it to clean up surfaces for what we do, it just wasn't efficient and for us it's not worth it when I could either get like, for example, here in my garage, I could get my shop back and I could vacuum my entire garage in about 10 minutes as opposed to using this. I got to do this thing for probably 20 to 25 minutes in order to just get everything picked up because it keeps throwing everything out and you got to keep going back over it. The other downside is if you have like cabinets or something like I do here, it's not going to get under those things. It's not going to get into the nooks and crannies of stuff. Um, um, it's just going to pick up the big area. So once again, for me, a vacuum would be more efficient. It would save me time and I can get into the nooks and crannies and make sure everything's cleaned up if I'm going to go to all the work to clean anyway. And so those were just the downsides with it. The stripe thing was a problem for us. The other thing we noticed with it is it does not like having different heights of surfaces. So when you're doing your sidewalks and you're transitioning from your driveway to your sidewalk or sometimes your sidewalks vary in height, anytime you have any type of height variance, what happens is is this front little scooper piece that's right here gets caught and the machine gets stuck so you kind of have to stop and put your foot on the back and then raise it up on the front and then push it forward to get up over that surface because it gets caught on it. It also would get caught on, I have a mat outside my garage door on the way into the house, and it would get caught just going up onto that mat from the floor, and so you'd have to pick it up, or what I learned is if you kind of come in and go sideways and back over it, then you could do it that way. 
but once again it doesn't like different levels of surfaces it kicks up a lot of dust as it's doing things so if you're picking up sawdust or something that's really dusty be prepared for the fact that you're going to have a lot of dust from this thing as it picks it up so you know i think a lot of it depends on your application and your expectations if you're doing like a real large shop and you want to be able to pick up gravel big things and do it quick without brooming then you know what, this would probably be something I would really consider. Just be prepared that this part here is gonna break at some point and it's not gonna pick everything up unless you do a bunch of passes. It could do well for you, but for me, it's just not gonna be something that's gonna work for us. So I'm gonna be returning this one, sorry to say, and the kids, cause they enjoyed playing with it. They thought it was kind of fun to work that thing around the front yard. But hey, I hope this video has been helpful for you. If it has, please do me a favor and hit that like button for me. It just lets YouTube know that y'all appreciate my content. If you'd like to see more videos like this one in the future, why don't you hit that subscribe button and stick around with me here in the garage. As always, I appreciate you stopping by and thanks for watching.